Hello, this is the fourth lesson on the decrees of God. We want to talk about today the work of God in making His will, His purposes to be seen in creation and how God sustains everything and works everything out according to the counsel of His own will. The Westminster Shorter Catechism at question uh, seven asks what are the decrees of God? The answer is the decrees of God are his eternal per plans based on the purpose of his will by which for his own glory he has foreordained everything that happens. And then in question eight it asks how does God carry out his decrees? The answer is God carries out his decrees in the works of creation and providence. How do things in this world really come to pass? Does everything happen according to our destiny? If so, how can my choices have any real meaning? Or does everything just happen all by itself by chance? Is there just randomness and this happening and that happening and that occurrence and this occurrence? If that's the case, then how can we have any assurance about the future? That the choices that I make and you make have any real meaning? Well, we have seen that God is sovereign. God is free to do what he wants because he's powerfully at, at work in the affairs of this world. Uh, God is not restrained. He's not bound by anything besides his own holy will. So he does whatever he pleases, whatever his plan and his intention is. And that is a plan that is governed by his character, his goodness, his wisdom. Now, one of the things we see in scripture is that God has an eternal plan for his creation. The universe, everything in it, has a purpose. God is accomplishing his goals just as he planned from eternity. In fact, everything that happens is according to that eternal plan and purpose. Now, we call this God's decree. He says, this is how shall be. And he says, in Genesis chapter 1, we see God said, let there be light, and there was light. God said that this happened, that happened, it happened, and that his, his decree. He says, this is how uh, things are going to happen. This is what is going to be accomplished. We sometimes call this God's set purpose. Uh, we sometimes call it God's will. Now, we speak of God's will in two very different ways. On the one hand, it's sometimes used to refer to God having determined what's going to happen and surely will happen, his decree. So, for instance, in creation, God said, let there be light. There was light. God said, let there be the birds of the air. There were birds of the air. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the term is used to refer to what God tells men. This is my intention. I want you to live according to my law, my commandments. Uh, but we know that man may or may not obey that command. The secret will of God is that which is God's will in his plans and purposes, uh, for instance, in creation, in providence, and in salvation or redemption, as it's sometimes called. Uh, but those things that God reveals as to this is how I want you to live, um, we also refer to that as God's will for us, but we don't necessarily do it. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, speaks to us of both of these things. The first part of the verse says, the secret things belong to the Lord our God. The plans and purposes of God that uh, have to do with um, creation and how God sustains everything, providence, why he brings a storm when he does, why he brings drought when he does, why he brings floods when he does, why he uh, places this ruler over us or that particular political party 
is in power. It's all according to the plans of God, the plans and purposes that you and I uh, are not told about by God and how he chooses people for himself, how he brings salvation to some people and to others he passes by. That's the secret will of God. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29 continues to say, but the things revealed, that is what we see in God's word, belong to us and to our children forever, that we may obey all the words of this law. Now, as I've just said, part of God's eternal decrees uh, include God's decision to save some people from their sins, simply in accord with his own good pleasure. It was not by our works, not by our striving, uh, it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but by his mercies he saved us. Because God is predetermined, has decided before uh, the creation uh, takes place in Genesis 1, God has foreknowledge of all events. He knows what will happen because he's making it happen. He has a plan that he is determined. He's not, um, as we would say sometimes in our culture, he's making it up as he goes along, that he's trying to make decisions all during uh, the process. No, he's decided this before he spoke and the worlds came into being. Now, one of the things we've uh, said before is that God never acts contrary to his own purposes. Uh, God acts for his own glory. We're told in Ephesians chapter 1 that he works out everything for the praise of his glorious grace. And that's fully appropriate when we consider his perfect character and his status as our creator. God uh, has a plan. He makes it happen. He m accomplishes it. And that is a, a plan and a purpose that is governed by his character. God's never going to act in a way that is contrary to his character. Now saying that, we need to understand that God is God and we aren't. He is the creator and knows all things and works everything according to his plans and purpose. And uh, we may not understand all of it. Uh, sometimes uh, if you see someone has woven a very beautiful uh, a banner or, or uh, tapestry, we call it, and there might be this beautiful scenery, uh, maybe a landscape or, or some beautiful scenery in nature. Um, and it's a beautiful thing that is woven together. But if you turn it around, uh, as you look at it, it's just look like various threads that are there and you, you can't see an see the intention and purpose of the weaver in that particular pattern. It just all looks like a bunch of colors and, and no discernible pattern. But you turn it around and you see the, the picture that was intended. We only see this part, the part that uh, to us doesn't appear to have much plans and purpose to it, but we know that God is making everything beautiful in his time, as Ecclesiastes says. Now, God, as we have said, works everything out for the praise of his glory, and that's fully appropriate uh, because of his character and that he's creator. Now, how he does that, we uh, divided in a couple of ways. First, in creation, and second, in providence. God puts his plan into operation when he created everything. And he continues to carry out his plan by upholding and providing for his creation. Uh, God didn't just create the world and step away from it. He's constantly involved with his world, what goes on in this universe. And every action and every uh, thing that happens, God is engaged and in, in, involved in that. Now, saying that, we know that God acts sovereignly, yet you and I and all people are still responsible uh, for our own actions. In Acts chapter 2, verse 23, the Apostle Peter is preaching to the crowd on the day of Pentecost. And we see... Uh, that he proclaims that God's eternal purpose was fulfilled in the death of Christ. He was put to death uh, by the crowd, by the people there in Jerusalem. You meant it for evil, 
but God is using that to bring glory to his name through the death of Christ and his resurrection. Evil men putting Christ to death is part of God's plan. God works out his purposes in such a way, though. He is not guilty of sin. He didn't make those people sin. They're acting according to uh, their sinful pattern, but they're working everything according to that plan and purpose of God. Uh, we freely choose to sin according to the nature that we have. And that nature that we have as unbelievers, as wicked men, are such that we're going to make choices that uh, do not please God. It's only when God changes our hearts are we able to do those things that are pleasing to God. Now, because uh, we act according to that nature, we are guilty for the evil that we do. When we sin, it's our fault. It's not God's fault. God is sovereign, but he is not responsible for man's sin. Now, if God were sovereign in such a way that we did not have uh, uh, the responsibility for our own actions and removing our free will, um, we wouldn't be responsible. We'd just be like puppets on a string and, and life would be meaningless. If everything happened by chance, our actions would be meaningless. It's only on the basis of a, the sovereign rule of the true God that our lives and our actions have any real meaning. God is the sovereign Lord over all things. He is creator. He has no limits upon him. We are creatures, and we're very limited. We're finite. God is infinite, eternal, and unchangeable in his being, and wisdom, and power, and holiness, and justice, and goodness, and truth. We are limited, and we cannot possibly understand fully the ways of God. We can only know God as he has chosen to reveal himself uh, to us. And so, uh, as Paul says in Romans, who has known the mind of the Lord when he's talking about the uh, plans and purposes of God and working all things according to the counsel of his will? Now, knowing God's sovereignty and how he carries out his decrees is of great benefit to us. Uh, does God choose some people to save because they deserve it more than others? No. We know from the Bible that they're all unrighteous. Uh, there is no one who sought after God. No, Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9 tells us, for it is by grace, that favor that we didn't merit and we didn't deserve, uh, that God has saved us. Uh, for it is by grace you've been saved through faith, by the a means of faith. And even that faith, Ephesians tells us, is not of ourselves. It didn't happen just from us. It was a gift of God. God gave us that faith to believe upon Christ and to be saved. So we have no room for boasting. Is God ever surprised by anything that happens? Well, we should say no, because God knows everything from, the, from before the foundation of the world. And so nothing catches him off guard. Nothing surprises him. Can we keep God's plan from being accomplished? Well, who of us are powerful enough to stop God? God is God. God's all powerful. Uh, does God's plan include just the big things, but the little things we choose to work out? No, every detail in this universe. Uh, there is no stray molecule out there that is doing its own plans and purposes. No, it all works according to God's plan and purpose. Now, the fact that God is sovereign and our grasp of, of this particular truth should give us great encouragement in the midst of every trial, every tr trouble that we have. And it's the foundation for our trust, our faithfulness, our obedience, and our perseverance. And it gives us a great boldness uh, to serve him. Uh, God is working all things out uh, to, to bless his people. But the ways he goes about doing that may be confusing at times for us. And that's where we learn to trust him, that he is indeed working everything after the counsel of his own will. Uh, to give you uh, a personal story, regarding that. Uh, 25 years ago, I was a chaplain, a pastor to 
uh, soldiers in our military in the United States, in, in my particular home state of Oklahoma, where I lived at the time. And a terrorist drove a large truck full of explosives and parked it in front of a building that the federal government had, a, a multi-story uh, office building. And a lot of people worked there and also came to uh, receive various government services there at that building. And the terrorist um, ex detonated the, the bomb on the truck and it just blew up the truck. It blew up uh, the front of the building. It was as if a giant had scooped out the whole front of the building and affected a number of the buildings all around that area. 168 people died in that explosion. And so I was tasked to go in and provide uh, pastoral uh, support and counseling and encouragement uh, to those who were there working to recover the bodies from that building. And I remember being assigned to uh, that task and I was walking down the street to turn the corner to go where this building was and looking up at it and just seeing it just the whole front end of it scooped out. And a lot of people in our area were uh, very upset, of course, by everything, and uh, just saying, "No, no, no, no! This wasn't this wasn't part of God's plan and purpose." And uh, I, you know, in the studies of scriptures, had always believed that God was sovereign over all things, and here was an opportunity where I was tested in that regard. And I remember praying. Uh, asking God to help me. I know, God, you are sovereign over all things and you're working this out for your glory and for our good. I don't understand all that that entails and how that is going to happen, but I trust you because you keep your word. You keep your promises, God. Uh, help me to be faithful in the calling and responsibilities I have to be a pastor to these folks, to preach, to uh, help console and to counsel uh, people there. And uh, Lord, give me strength to do your will. And God was very gracious to give that to me in the midst of great tragedy with that. God gives us boldness when we remember who he is uh, and that uh, we are nothing and we can do nothing and we need everything from God and he gives it to us because we can trust him as well that he's working everything out according to his faithfulness and we can trust his goodness um, that even uh, his uh, promises to us uh, for instance in in first john chapter one uh, when we sin god is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness when we turn away from those sins and turn to him in repentance so this is something that should fill our hearts with great wonder and it should lead our hearts to praise and worship God. So it's very, very important. Now, sometimes when we consider this, it's hard to understand. And that is true because we are creatures who has known the mind of the Lord, who has been his counselor, Paul tells us in Romans 11. Any understanding of salvation apart from this doctrine of God's uh, sovereignty in creation, in providence, and in redemption and electing people of choosing a people for himself. Uh, if, we, if we don't understand this doctrine, this teaching of scripture, then it leaves us with, we save ourselves. It was my faith. It was my decision that led to salvation. And thus, I have to do something in which I, I can look back on and boast. But in fact, our salvation is really the gift of God's free grace. So we don't have any room to boast as our salvation is dependent upon God. So another couple of things we need to keep in, in mind here. The biblical doctrine of God's eternal purpose should never result in negligence or feeling that somehow we're not accountable to God for our actions. It comes from a misunderstanding of God's decrees. Yes, God's going to carry out his will and intent and purpose. 
Uh, but we have a responsibility to do what he commands us in his word to do. Just as we had said in Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed, that is what God tells us in his word to, to do and to be, uh, belong to us and to our children forever, that we may obey all the words of this law. There was a, a preacher in London, England in the 1800s by the name of Charles Haddon Spurgeon. And he said, if those who were elect of God, that those people that God had determined that he was uh, going to save these people, if those people had a yellow stripe painted down their back, he would be looking up every shirt tail in London uh, to see who they were. Well, God doesn't do that. But God has told us as ministers of the gospel to preach the word. And God will save people when and where and how he pleases. We also have to be careful that we go the other direction and think that uh, we have to rush around and do all these things and if we don't then God's plan isn't going to be carried out. No. God works according to his will. We need to be uh, aware of the fact and, and live according to the fact that he commands us to do certain things and he will work according to his purpose. Now sometimes we also uh, need to be careful that uh, because we don't see God immediately working in the lives of people that we somehow think that God isn't working uh, according to the counsel of his will. We find that when we go and, and evangelize various places and speak to people about their need of Jesus and Sometimes they're very opposed to that work. Uh, they don't want to hear about the gospel. They don't want to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, but then later, uh, somebody else comes along and preaches the gospel, and God moves upon their hearts to be saved. God will work according to his plans and purposes, uh, but you may have been there if you had preached and, uh, to them and they opposed that word, God might have been using that in a way uh, to bring glory to himself. You know, the Apostle Paul talks about uh, I uh, so planted and so-and-so uh, watered and God gets the increase. It's like a farmer who goes in and has to break up very hard soil in order uh, to plant the seed and then somebody else comes along and waters it and somebody else comes along and harvests it. And so God's going to work out his plans and purposes according to his plan <laughs> uh, and according to his timing. You and I are responsible, though, to obey the words of the scriptures uh, with regards to our calling, with regards to how we live for God and for his glory. Uh, this is a teaching of the Bible that we need to be very careful with. You and I have no room to boast. Anything that we are is by the grace of God. And so when we look at other people who have not believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we can pity them because we were once like them. There but for the grace of God go I, is a saying that we have in our culture. Uh, God has saved us by his mercies. And so these people are also if they are to be saved, it's by the mercy of God. And so uh, it gives us uh, opportunity to be patient with others and to ask God, God, please work in the hearts of these people. Open their hearts and minds to the gospel, to the Lord Jesus Christ, to give them faith just as you did for me. So when we correctly understand this doctrine and as we correctly teach it to others, it gives great encouragement and assurance, and it leads to praise. It leads to reverence of God and admiration of Him. It leads to humility on our part and diligence to do God's work and a great comfort to all who sincerely obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. And we'll discuss in the next lesson even more about these decrees of God.